This week, we'll be talking about uh, updating the design of the part to make it easier to mold, updating the mold to hopefully make it easier to fill the mold, and then how to deal with importing a new version of the file from SolidWorks and incorporating that into Fusion 360. Welcome to another episode. I apologize for taking a uh, little while to create this video uh, between work, skiing, and uh, being sick one weekend uh, kept me a little bit busy. So the, since the last video, I've done a few things. Uh, the first thing that I did, which I mentioned in the last video, is I uh, posted a question on the Autodesk form. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do is to see if I could get some advice about better ways to lay out the runners for the mold. And sure enough, I got some really good advice. Uh, I made changes uh, to the mold uh, and <clears throat> created a new version of the mold, which uh, I have around here somewhere. Uh, here you go. You can see this is a very different runner. So I'm going to go into the philosophy of that a little bit. And then I'm also going to uh, tell you about some of the changes that I made to the part itself. So in terms of the changes to the mold, the main reason for doing that is, the first thing of all, uh, what uh, the person on the forums told me is that I should be filling the mold from one side, not from uh, two places. Because uh, when you fill, uh, fill the mold from one side, you get a flow of plastic that's uh, more regular all the way across. Now, I don't know whether or not my machine has the ability to fill the mold all the way from one side. We'll find out. The other thing he told me, and this is really interesting, is that the plastic is a non-Newtonian fluid. And what that means is that uh, when you have shear, you can actually decrease the velocity of the, of the plastic as well as heat it up a little bit. So the idea is you, you have this thick runner and the plastic moves through the thick runner and gets to this tiny little opening called the gate. And the idea of the gate is you want it to be fairly uh, narrow and also not very long. And the reason you don't want it to be very long is because that shape will generate shear in the plastic and help with the filling of the mold. So in my new mold, I start out with a really small circular gate. And I'm going to slowly work the, my way up in terms of size. The other thing he really harped on multiple times is that I should be heating the mold. <clears throat> so with a mold that's too cold, the plastic will solidify too soon. So doing some research, what I discovered is that it should be about 120 degrees Fahrenheit for the material that I'm using. So I'm going to try that as well. Anyway, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you the changes that I made to the runner. I'm also going to show you a couple of tricks with uh, Fusion 360 that I learned. And then I'm going to show you some changes that I made to the part design as well to make it a little bit easier to fill some parts of uh, some sections of the mold and to get uh, better filling of the part. So let's head on over to the computer. Here's the uh, new design for the runner. Let me zoom in on this. And there are a couple things that are important here. One is you can see that uh, it's just filling from one side. There's nothing on this side anymore. Uh, the other thing is that this is the really tiny gate that I mentioned. I'm going to start with this size gate and then slowly make it larger until I get a uh, complete filling of the mold. Uh, another thing is this, is, uh, this section here is what apparently is called a J-runner. And the idea of the J-runner is that the, 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 the very beginning of the plastic, essentially the front of the plastic, is going to be cooler than the parts near the end here. And so this is going to be closer to solidification. So you want that more solid part to go all the way around to here and then stop. And that way you get the fresher plastic going through the gate. Now along with that is a vent here. And he also said that I should make the, the vent the full width of the runner. And I also increased the width of the, uh, the air vent here as well. So those should help fill the part. The final thing he said is in terms of positioning, the gate, it should be positioned so that the plastic shoots in and it hits this. And then it's going to move from one side to the other. Now you want it to hit something like this where it can, where it can move 
pretty easily to the sides as opposed to the back here. Because if it were to hit the back, uh, that increases the pressure on the back and that can actually start to force the mold halves apart. And then you get flash or you can't hold the mold halves together. So I made all of those changes and uh, then milled the, the parts. Uh, one thing I want to show you is how I set up this runner. So let me turn the runner on. And one of the things that uh, took me a little while to figure out is how to make this piece here that came out from this. Essentially what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a plane that went through this and then I could draw the sketch on here and extrude from that plane. So the question is, how did I get that plane? Now, here's the plane that I'm referring to, and you can see that's going right through the center. If I click on Edit for that plane, you can see that the plane is the, the intersection of the, these three points. So how did I get these three points? The first one is a sketch here. So I added a sketch and uh, that sketch is on this plane here. Uh, now it turns out, I realized this later, it doesn't really matter where these two planes are that uh, have points for the, the new plane that I want to create. They just need to be separated from each other. So I took that plane and then I said, okay, I want to project onto that plane. And then I added these two points, the point here and the point there. So that gives me essentially defining the vertical part aspect of the plane. Now I need to define the horizontal aspect of the plane. And that I did with another offset. So I offset another plane. And then I just projected a single point uh, from here again. And then finally I created this plane through those three points. Once I did that, it was pretty easy to create a sketch on that plane and then I could extrude that. So that's how all of that works. Now what I want to do is uh, show you a few things about the mold that I made and give you a little bit of a trick as to how to deal with something I ran into. Okay, this is um, how it came out of the mill. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that uh, there are some burrs on here. Now, the reason there, there are burrs on here is because I made a decision which may not have been the best decision to partially complete the mold. In other words, I didn't do the finishing pass with the 1 32nd inch cutter around the walls. And as a result, there are all of these burrs here on the edge. Now, if this were a finished mold, what I could do is, there's a little trick that uh, someone taught me, which is, if you put this on a piece of sandpaper, on a flat surface, and then sand the whole top, that'll basically sand away, you know, a couple tenths of the material and that's enough to get rid of the burrs. Now in my case, that's not going to work because there are burrs down here as well because I didn't uh, do the final finishing pass. So what I'm going to have to do before I make some attempts with this mold is put it back in the machine and actually go ahead and finish those walls either with a 16th inch cutter or with the original planned 132nd inch cutter. Now the other thing is, uh, this time around these uh, holes turned out beautifully. As you can see, there's a very nice finish and just a little bit of a chamfer. So I'm really happy with uh, how that turned out. Okay, so the number of uh, changes I made. The first one is I, I added this little cutout here. So underneath here and underneath here are the two locations I was getting sink marks. And I was getting sink marks because there was too much thickness of material here compared to the rest of the wall. So I simply opened this up. So now it's the uh, same thickness basically across and there are some small rips. So this should get rid of those two sink marks. The other thing that I did is I uh, added some material here. So if you'll recall, uh, this part here was not filling all the way because it was too thin. You can see it's pretty thin. So I, I thickened it up. Uh, that required changing some other parts, but you know, that's all fine. Now that I've made the changes to the SolidWorks file, I need to bring that back into Fusion 360. The way I do that is by going back to my project 
you can see here's the file the outside mold and what I want to do is uh, actually that's that's correct it's it's this part here that I need to pull back in outside to so what I do is I say import new version select file and then down here I have to change this to SolidWorks and then I want outside two so that's this one right here you can see it's the same but it has the notches there click import click upload and as you can see this takes a while to upload so I'll fast forward okay uh, there's a little warning down here you can see it says one component is out of date that's perfect what that means is that's actually a really nice feature because what that means is and you can see this here as well that you can control when you update your places where you're using that model in other words it won't automatically update them in the different places and so that means you can choose when to update it in different places so for example if you have a bunch of fixtures and everything else that you've set up you don't have to worry about uh, all of your work being changed by importing something else until you're ready to handle those changes. I'm ready to handle those changes right now. So I'll go ahead and click here and say get latest version. You can also say get choose version, but I, I want the latest version, so I'll do that. And what you'll see after a slight delay is that it um, recomputed uh, the part uh, there are a bunch of errors, so unfortunately what that means is I have to go back and I have to start fixing it. Now, go to core so that I limit my history to just that. And the first error is right here in the sketch. So let's take a look to see what's going on there. Uh, and I'm also going to show this part here so you can see it. So this is uh, something that I don't really enjoy in Fusion which is you know, trying to fix all of these things and figure out what's going on. So it's saying that it doesn't know what these are. So what I typically do is I go ahead, and if someone knows a better way, I'd love to hear it. So I delete the existing reference, and then I can recreate the reference like so. So now I fixed that one. Uh, this one here I don't think I need, so I can just uh, delete that one, or it's probably this that I have to delete. So now this is orphaned, and I have to come in and select that again. Uh, likewise here, you know, delete this one, set it again, got another one here, and that means this reference is now dangling, so I have to put that back in. And you can see now everything looks good. We don't have any yellow, so I've taken care of that one. And in fact, if you look here, there's no yellow there. Now there is a, a red here, so that means we have to fix that as well by saying edit feature. And you can see it's missing the uh, tool body, which is this here. So I can click on that, and now that's fixed as well. Okay, so that isn't too bad. Uh, you can see this has incorporated all the changes. If we go back to the top and uh, look at the whole model, or the whole project, you can see there are a number of other errors that I need to fix as well. Now, while I'm here, I want to mention something else about Fusion 360 that is really cool. I have this uh, component cycle colors, component color cycling toggle turned on. If I turn it off, what you'll see is that there's no color here, which, you know, you can argue whether that's good or bad. But the important thing is you can't really tell which component any of these operations belong to. Now, if we turn that back on, what you can see is each of these is colored. Now, those colors here corresponds to the colors here. And so that makes it really easy to figure out, okay, this one, the light blue, uh, that means this guy here. And there's, the, there's uh, one of the operations that I need to fix. Again, going back, the light blue is actually scattered across different places, but you can easily get an idea as to you know, which of the components these operations belong to. So that's a really cool thing. Uh, I have the mold in the machine right now. I'm doing a finishing pass, so once that's done, I'll come back, I'll show you the results, and then I'll try to wrap it up. 
I just pulled the mold out of the machine and you can see after the finishing pass that uh, we don't have any burrs at all. It's very clean. If we look at the back wall you can see that's very clean as well. So this is now ready to uh, put into the, uh, oh and I thought I'd show you the, uh, the gate as well. There's the tiny gate. As I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can fill the mold with this uh, small gate. I don't think I can. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase the size of the gate to uh, the point where I can actually fill the mold all the way and uh, see if I can actually fill it all the way. The theory is that um, the shear from here will reduce the viscosity and make it easier to fill. And if it doesn't, well, uh, I'll either have to go to a different machine uh, or I'll have to go back to filling it from two places. See you next time.